Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art and Talk. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk. While we're continuing today to bring you an additional artist from the gathering that's currently on exhibit at the Cultural Council for Palm Beach County in Lake Worth, Florida. I hope you've had a moment to check out some of the other artists' interviews. So the gathering is looking at ways that we gather together um, out in society and also in our private homes, having that theme of gathering. Our artist today is going to take us on a journey of gathering in a sacred context with his installation piece at the gathering. Our guest is a self-taught artist and he works in mixed media and we'll be looking at his installation piece and also some select images of his other work and diving into his journey as well as an artist. So thank you so much for being with us today. And I'd like to welcome our guest, Jose Mendez. Hi, Jose, welcome. Hi, Leslie Sue. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, we're delighted to have you. Oh my gosh, uh, there's so many places to, to start with. Um, the installation piece at the gathering, um, can you set some of this up? This is absolutely amazing. And we're gonna be moving into gathering in, in a sacred context. Talk to us about the Day of the Dead and this whole um, idea that you had and, and uh, your Mayan roots and, and all that good stuff. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm, we, we have uh, been celebrating Day of the Dead in Lake Worth for, uh, I think our six, it was our sixth year. And um, little by little, it's, it's doubled in size each year. So it was only, I think it was only a matter of time before we got to the Cultural Council. And I'm grateful for Jessica Ransom inviting, uh, inviting us to have an, have an altar in the, in the council. So this was years in the making. And I thought, what kind of altar could we create that would commemorate? And, and an artist that, uh, that is well known, you know, um, that is also uh, Mexican and everything just came together. You know, one, there's an exhibit opening here uh, for Frida and uh, Diego here at Mexican Modernism at the Norton Museum. Um, I said, let's tie those two together. And um, an ofrenda was created for uh, Diego and um, Frida. And as you can see, I try to create it as large as I could, um, which is not, not that uh, my my interpretation to that is that they were larger than life. Uh, if they were ahead of their time. I feel like they were, you know, they were traveling artists. They were actually famous while they were born. Um, and it, it's just a different. I think it's a different story than what we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And Jose, before we look at the installation piece, um, for those who may not be familiar with the Day of the Dead celebration. Um, talk to us about the, the sacred altar and its uh, purposefulness and, and meaningfulness um, in conjunction with the Day of the Dead celebration. So the, the friend is usually placed um, days in, in days typically, sometimes during uh, the year. It, it, it can also be placed when someone uh, has passed away, but traditionally it is um, that week uh, of um, the last week of October, um, each day has different interpretations. Also, there's day of the day of the uh, the children, um, but traditionally, All Souls Day, which is uh, November second, and in Mexico, Day of the Dead, um, ofrendas are created because your uh, loved ones return for that day, and during that time, you want to place some of the foods that. They, um, they ate um, a water for their voyage, um, the Sempasuchel, which is the marigold. As you can see, there were several marigolds. There's actually 500 marigolds in the installation. Um, and that uh, marigold, uh, traditionally, um, the, the smell from the marigold uh, brings the souls in, along with um, the monarchs. I don't know if you know that, the monarchs actually travel from North America and in and, 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 uh, Mexico. Um, and the monarchs uh, are also looking for the Sempasuchel. So the monarch, if you look at the, uh, the, the ofrenda, um, you'll see that there's uh, about 50 uh, monarch butterflies. 
because they both tie into the um, Day of the Dead. Uh, so you want to place their foods, um, some of their items, their photos. And I did that for both uh, Diego and Frida. Um, Diego was known for collecting um, artifacts, uh, prehistoric, uh, I'm sorry, pre-Hispanic artifacts. Uh, so if you look at it closely, uh, a few people um, confronted me and not in a bad way. They were just like, I feel like you're representing Frida a little more than um, Diego. And I had to re reply and I was like, it is it is tougher to sell Diego because you know Frida's hot right now and there's there's Frida everything Frida bags you name it Frida bath bombs, but I said um, that it was harder to find items for Diego, but I did represent him in the pre-Hispanic um, different uh, types of um, rocks um, and those uh, his food <laughs> his favorite food um, and uh, his photos so that's a little bit about the ofrenda before you show it. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and have a look. Okay. So here's the actual sacred altar and you standing there. So it has different, different levels, um, as you can see. Uh, and uh, it has Katrina's next to it. And I, and um, we were the, the council, the cultural council, allowed us to paint the wall. So I made it look like Casa Azul. Um, I try to give it that Casa Azul feel, which is, you know, that bright blue. Um, and then um, I looked at the rest. I've been to Casa Azul a couple of times. So um, I, I try to give it that feeling. And I think, uh, I think we did pretty good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are the, the elements in it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I was saying there are the marigolds um, that you were uh, mentioning. Yep. You were saying like the scent is is what kind of pulls the souls in, that attracts the the souls. Correct. There's a uh, 500 marigolds. Um, there's a traditional papel picado that's placed uh, around um, and hung around um, the, the the villages and the different pueblos um, to signify. You know, it's a it's a it's a festival. It's uh, we're celebrating um, your your life and um, as you as a, you were in your um, in your in the, your previous um, interview. It's uh you know it's it's a it's a cycle. You know, it's not looked as um as a time of mourning. It's more of a celebration. You know, uh, the great things. You know, memorizing. I know um I I my my uncle passed away um, due to COVID, and I I you know I think of the great things that he he provided for me. Um, just the leadership um, and also having a, a, as a, a male to male figure um, of ha looking up to another male, you know, and being able to identify uh, and picking up some of his traits. So um, the papel picado also was extended up um, and the papel picado is the, the colorful paper, uh, which is made out of tissue and traditionally they're made um, by artisans in, in Mexico and they're cut uh, with um, with with the razor plate, so you they're all they're all custom, and they're cut uh, 400 pieces at a time, so you'll never get one that's exactly the same. You'll never get a whole roll that's exactly the same one because it's tissue paper and it cuts a certain way. Um, and two, um, either you're cutting 400 sheets at a time, so and then they're they're placed together. As you can see, that's what we did there. Um, the uh, Katrina, there's a small Katrina on, on his side, on Diego. So Diego's side, if we're looking at directly, it's the left side. And um, Frida's side is the right side. So I put uh, the Katrina, the small white Katrina um, on his side because, um, and, and I love this because I, I listened to your previous interview and I'm tying it in together. So Jose Posada was um, the illustrator that created a Katrina, um, but Diego Rivera painted a Katrina in his mural, and that um, that made the Katrina much more popular uh, because Diego Rivera had a higher status, and he's in Mexico City. So Jose Postada is the originator, but um, Diego Rivera made her name uh, grand, and that also you know, and the Katrinas are the ones that I handmade. Um, that you see to the left and right. Um, those are all handmade with a 
paper mache um, and glue and cardboard. Uh, this is probably 95% recycled materials. The rest is um, the rest is paint, you know, um, glues and, and the paints that I had to use to change the colors. Mm -hmm. And was this the largest altar to the Day of the Dead that you have created thus far? You know, we have a, uh, I'm, I'm thankful, you know, at, as an artist, uh, I'm sure you know that um, you, you begin to meet other artists that are better at different skills, you know, and I'm not saying that I, I, the, the friend is, I'm not the greatest at, but I have so many things to worry, not worry, so many other things to make sure that are uh, ready for the festival that I have, I have an altar creator that she's been working with us since the first year, but she wasn't here this year. Uh, she's up in uh, NYU uh, for school. Um, and we missed her dearly because ultimately this would have been her installation, uh, but she has created larger installations than this. This one I would say is larger because of the way the paper goes sideways, mm -hmm. but oh, I, she's had more wall space taken over. Um, and she actually cuts her uh, papel picado, um, her own tissue paper. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's close to it. It's close to the largest one, but I can't, I don't, I don't, I don't as far as in, in Lake Worth Beach or, you know, Palm Beach County, um, it's up there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I remember being in that actual space and it's just, it's very compelling. It's very captivating. And um, I remember standing in front of it, just looking at all the different levels and all the different objects and looking at the symbology of it. It's, it's really quite beautiful. Thank you very much. And, and that, you know, it's, it's just, you know, again, it's to celebrate the, the life of, of both artists. And I try to have as many elements uh, as I could from the dogs, uh, the cholo dogs that they had as pets to the foods and candies, alcohol. Um, I, I, you know, I, I studied the artists and I try to get as close as I could uh, to give you that feeling of, you know, them returning. There's even a paintbrush and a some paint there, you know, just in case they decide to paint the night that they return. Um, but uh, ultimately the goal was to, to make sure that uh, um, the crowd, when they saw it, they, they, they were captivated by it. And um, as you know, um, Frida um, used a lot of indigenous clothing. So there's a uh, indigenous jewelry, uh, we chose jewelry which is beaded jewelry and the skull in the center is also Huicho beaded also, but in larger beads uh, by, a, by an artist in, in, in LA. And um, when we started this festival, I, I, I wanted to make it authentic as I could for United States and uh, Mexico. So I took, I've, I've took in quite a few trips um, to Mexico City. I usually go to Mexico City um, once a year before the festival starts, just to pick up some on some ideas uh, and see what 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 uh, what uh, what what has changed, and then um, to to L.A. Los Angeles, which is has uh, celebrates has at least ten to twelve different Day of the Dead celebrations going on um, for the month of November and uh, October through November, and. Um, I'd like to go check out the different things that they have going on, what has changed. And um, to, to my pleasure, when I was in, in Mexico City, um, I was checking the bands because, you know, we have live music also. And um, it, it, was, it was relieving to hear an Irish band. You know, she had, she, she, was, she had her Irish accent and it was a rock band. And so it, it, this has become an international festival and it's just a, uh, a celebration. Mm -hmm. So um, that made me happy because our, our obviously our our community is um, multilingual speaking, and uh, so we have mariachis, marimba, uh, Spanish Aztec dancers to some rock and roll towards the end of the night. You know, it's it's various music. Uh, we 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 cater to the community, and um, we we had an excellent year this year. I'm sorry that I'm straying away, but. Um, 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 this, this is where all these, uh, a lot of my creativity comes from is from traveling to these different, um, places, um, specifically to, um, help make the, um, festival authentic 
and help grow in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, Jose. I, I love all the, you know your dedication to you know keeping it authentic and and um, you know bringing in all these different elements. I, I have to mention that I love that you put a paintbrush on there in case Frida or Diego come in and they're like, hey, I, okay, now I want to paint. So they they have that available at the altar. What 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 a great uh, touch with that. And of course, all the the thoroughness that you went through with you know getting the research correct and and uh, whatnot. Um, before we move to the next one, was there, is there anything else that you'd like to touch upon about this? Uh, I can say that almost all the items on um, the altar are uh, from Mexico or are handmade by artists. Mm -hmm. okay. So I try to keep it as authentic as I could. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And here we have another of your art pieces, if you'd like to share with us about this. Now we're moving in a different direction. So this is uh, more of my uh, canvas work. Um, and I was, um, when, when we were speaking earlier, I was telling you that I have, a, I have a experience with, uh, with spray guns and how to use the pressure and you know how to get the blends. So, in this photo, it's, it's a great example because it shows how I blended the yellow to the orange, to the red, and then the green to the yellow. Um, I uh, don't have any, like, I uh, would say real art school, like uh, any art school background, but my, um, I, do, I did go to a technical school for two years for auto body, and uh, I did learn how to paint vehicles. So I would say that I, um, that helped me um, help me learn to use the um the spray cans so that so this is uh, mixed media and then it has a little bit of acrylic which is the white um and the rest are different sharpies this is when i was on my sharpie kick and as you can see it's surrounded by sharpies and i and that even the white might be a sharpie to be honest with you because it took me a while to get to acrylic i i uh, had this thing about just using sharpies and um Sharpies, different kind of markers uh, that I can find, and spray paints. Mm -hmm. And talk to us, Jose, about the uh, visual imagery itself. Um, what is the uh, symbolism going on and the message conveyed through your art piece? Um, and this is actually one of my favorites. So thank you um, for asking that great question. This is Mother Earth, you know. Uh, Ultimately, you know, what, how we treat her is what we get back. Um, we, uh, to the right, we have a, a, a like a tsunami coming. Um, and to the left, um, we have the sunrise and, you know, uh, you know, she needs both, both elements, water and sun to um, keep going. And um, all the leaves in her, um, all the leaves in, 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 in the top um, are a bunch of little uh, hearts. So, um, you know, it's, it's a kind of like a love piece. Um, you know, think of a mom, you, you know, you always think of a, you know, nurturing uh, mother. Um, so that's kind of what it falls down to, you know, having roots and, you know, whatever you put in the ground, um, it's what's nurturing her. So it's, to me, it's kind of peaceful, you know, because when I when when I think of a mother, I usually think of you know, in in those uh, in that sense, is more of a peaceful. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a beautiful piece, and I I love the symbology that you're sharing. Um, before Thank we you. look, at, yeah, before we look at a couple other pieces, Jose, um, tell us about how this self-taught art journey began. You mentioned the auto body. Um, training and then the painting and we see how that kind of like filtered its way in with this last piece so moving into deciding to uh, work in art and teach in art and create an art how did all that come about it, it's, it's it's a quite a, a trip um i i started painting um i got inspired by a mountain dew can um in in 2006 seven or eight around that time and then um, I lost my job during the, 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 
the crash of 2008. Um, so I was able to work on a little art and then I started, I just kept working on, on some art personally. And people were like, I like your art. You know, and friends were like, can I have it? And, you know, it, it kind of went that route. And um, then I got into the social services um, and that didn't happen until like completely around 12, 2012. But what happened was that um, the arts have gotten really hot in the last 10 years, I want to say. And it's now for therapy, you know. So um, what happened was I, you know, a lot of times I think many artists I might have a hard time and difficult times. And that's when I created some of my times because in 2008, I was planning on this is my career. I even went to school for the job that I was going to because I finally found a job that I liked. And then when that crashed, I was just like depressed. And I want to say I still have all those art pieces and they're really not for sale. I've been asked to sell one, but um, they're, they're deep. They're deep. Um, they have deep meaning to me that that was a, a guy that no longer exists. And not that he was a bad guy. I'm just saying that um, that level of, um, I guess, um, feeling helpless um, was it ha hasn't returned and it hasn't. Uh, hopefully he doesn't return, but um, that happened. And in the transition camp where I just kept drawing and, and like I was telling you, I had this thing about Sharpies and it kept going and I got better at it. And then my job changed to a child development specialist. And in that job, um, we had to create a lot of children's activities. Um, and they were all a lot of manuals, um, a lot of hands-on eye, eye, hand-eye coordination because these, these programs were for kids zero to five and we were, we were trying to make sure that parents were hitting all their mouth, all the five different milestones for each um, area. And I learned a lot, quite a bit about child development. And, and, and I think um, we're, we're, we're just big children also, you know, sometimes we revert, you know, and to move forward. And um, we started having classes um, at, at, at this, um, job that I had and I was there for eight years and the great thing about this program was that we created the program it was what the community needed and I and, and I became uh and we had our first art class and I really enjoyed it um I, I could see that the the families that did um join us enjoyed it and that grew so then I started teaching art classes to my friends and they had fun and before you knew it, I mean, I'm going really fast, but it, it was quite an amount of time. It's been like the last six years. It just kept growing and growing. And um, I think um, being as a teaching artist here, because I'm now teaching artists at the museum, because and I really did start from in the backyard. Um, being able to connect with your with your with your students is important. Uh, being able to see the change and um, Sometimes I feel like some artists are too uh, much of a perfectionist. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But when you're a teacher, I think it's important to tell the students to, that your mistake is not a mistake. Your mistake is what makes it different. You know, this is, you're unique. You know, um, sometimes um, when I have classes here, we, um, I'm, I'll tell the adults, I'm like, you're being too much of an adult because they're like, I don't know where to start. And I'm like, when, I'm like, you're being too much of an adult. And I say this because when I teach my third graders or fourth graders, they just start, <laughs> you know, they just go I'm like, fi find that person and just go, it doesn't have to be perfect. I know you want it cut out nice and neat, but then what if all of ours could look exactly the same? You know, it, it's not gonna have that small individuality. So I, I tend to keep that thorough, even with my life, like everything does not need to be perfect. It's, um, as long as it's present, most of the times, nobody will notice. I so appreciate you sharing all this, Jose. It sounds like, you know, through losing that job um, that and all that you experience on, on a personal level that, um, and I love the Mountain Dew and then the whole Sharpie kind of like fascination. And, but then this whole world opened up to you of, of creating and kind of like, um, you know, beginning to really find your your place and and your your almost like your your soul purpose 
And um, also then with the children and with teaching, and then uh, it seems like so many revelations happen because that's, that's a, a tough thing initially to go through, you know, with losing a job and, and whatnot, but it seems like so many beautiful things were birthed out of it, you know, progressively. And what, what a beautiful unfoldment. So I so appreciate you sharing that with us. Thank you uh, very much. I, I just felt like I think I, it's important for people to know um, I relied on that job. And even here, I still don't just focus on one. I'm still a freelance artist. And I think it's, um, I, I just felt like that was my life. <laughs> and, and sometimes it's important for us to know that your job is not your life. It's also good to, you know, have different things in the, in, in the background. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I love your approach that you're sharing um, as a teacher to uh, young um, children and then also to adults, you know, really trying to, um, like, particularly with adults, like, you know, kind of breaking their mold of like, oh, okay, it has to be perfect. It's, you know, kind of like, kind of getting them to be almost more like uninhibited where, where the kids are like, yeah, let's start. And, you know, the, the adults are like, okay, well, wait a minute, let me get everything right here and, and this and that. So what, what, what a beautiful um, a teacher you are in, in being able to, you know, present these things and saying that a mistake is actually something beautiful and, and almost not even to have that, you almost like saying, like the, omit that from your vocabulary, which I think is, is you know, really um, quite beautiful as well. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we have a couple more images to look at. So let's go Great. ahead and um, pull this up. All right, this one is actually going back to the, um, the Day of the Dead with the altar. Do you want to touch upon this? Yeah, this is my, I think she's my favorite. <laughs> I, I, she, you know, the, the gold, you know, she, to me, she just seems like really luxurious. And this photo that uh, one of the photographers took that, that day of the opening, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it just, I, I love this image. Um, it, um, this is one of the Katrinas and, and um, like it was said in your previous conversation, in your previous talk, it was, um, uh, it was classism and um, why, the, why the illustrator Jose Posada made these was to say, hey, you know, it doesn't matter what class you're in, ultimately you're gonna die. You know, ultimately we're all going to the same place. Um, so I don't think there are many um, Katrina makers in South Florida. I've seen these a lot in the West of um, USA and absolutely, definitely, um, this is a, a um, art, um, this is a artisan style of Mexico um, and, and Central America uh, where they use paper mache and um, uh, cardboard. Um, so because we celebrate Day of the Dead, um, I was thinking what will go great with the installation of um, Diego and uh, Frida's um, ofrenda. And like I said, what, what else would go great with um, just making that Katrina connection because they're called Katrinas um, stronger with um, making Diego um, one of the, um, one of the one of the people that made um, or the person that made the Katrinas much more popular. So originally, <laughs> here's some behind the scene things. I was trying to make them eight feet. <laughs> so twice the size. It didn't work out because of the materials and the space that I could um, that I could keep them. Um, and then I started thinking even these like uh, you have to be careful with. Um, when they travel and um you know just small logistics so i was like let's start with four feet this year because i made smaller ones and then we'll move to eight feet so i started actually working on my eight foot one now um i'm only starting creating the upper body um because the I, I have another idea for the for the i think I'm, I'm creating it to where i can break it in half so it's not um so it's not as cumbersome, you know, and, and I can store it away somewhere where it won't, where it's not too high and then getting into doors and, you know, you gotta start thinking about those things once uh, they get a certain size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that, getting into like the construction of it and, and the logistics, as you were saying, and the practicality. And yeah, I absolutely love this. It's just so filled with spirit. 
And right. um, I, mm -hmm. I use my media spray paint again. <laughs> it's actually spray paint. Ah, oh, very good. Not everywhere, but um, most of it. The, the details are acrylic. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All Thank right. You. Oh, there we have a nice um, headshot of you with with all the uh, colorful background. I have a I have a I have an office in in the in the hatch uh, eleven twenty one, and um, uh, you know one of one of now that we're talking one of the one of the individuals that inspired me was a doctor my my friend's um, dad. Uh, I went into his home and he had a um, he had a frame. Um, he was also an artist. He had a frame um all around his home about two inches separated so there was a frame the whole house was framed with different art um uh, and that inspired me and i was like boy why don't you make your own <laughs> why don't you make you know why don't you do that so my office has uh it's full of my art it has about two inches separated of uh different artworks you can kind of see in the background um it's all very colorful um you know, when when I when um, I, I I put that to my uh, Maya roots, um, a lot of our clothing are very bright. Mm -hmm. Tell us also, Jose, um, tying your art with your Mayan roots, as you were just saying, with you know these uh, great bold bursts of color. How else has your Mayan roots also kind of played into your art as well? Um, I, you know, with the nature, um, I. I you know the 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 uh, picture that we spoke about with Mother Nature photo. Um, the Maya were very in tune with Mother Nature with having a calendar um, of eighteen days and um, 20, 20 months, uh, which was a very identical having you know the agriculture uh, system. So I I think that's what tied in uh, my work with the paper mache, um, more of the traditional styles of arts. Um, and and with the day, with the Day of the Dead because the Day of the Dead is uh, celebrated in, in areas that are very indigenous and um, that was because of uh, you know the Catholicism and you know um, the the other um, Mayan um, and Aztec and Indi indigenous um, religions so there there was a there was an understanding where it would be celebrated on November 2nd. So I think um, when when I discovered Day of the Dead um, and learned more about it and its, and its uniqueness and realized that my family had been celebrating Day of the Dead, except for it's a little different in, um, in Guatemala, they actually, um, it's identical to Mexico, but the difference is that they don't decorate as much. So they go to the actual graveyards and they play music all day, starting the day of. Um, and uh, there is music, uh, there's uh, incense, and 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 not foods, but more like drinks. So um, it's not. I would I would say it's not as um, it's not as big as a party as as the Mexican um, Day of the Dead. And that's from the part where I'm from, because there's also another part in Guatemala and Zumpango. That celebrates with large kites, and I would, um, if anybody, if you're not a, a familiar with that celebration, I would say uh, Google Sumpango Guatemalan Day of the Dead kites. And these kites we brought in three years ago, and they stand from 30 to 40 to 50 feet, uh, amazing. And the goal is for them, uh, they compete against each other, and they have to fly. The goal is for them to fly. So. This is how my I think my indigenous um, roots tie in together with my art. We actually have an installation here that has to do with kites, and uh, the more the more I, I uh, keep learning about my culture, the the more you know different things pop up that um, actually bring me in because I don't bring it in. It, I feel like it brings me in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a question for you, Jose. Being a mixed media artist. What is your thought process that goes into creating your pieces in terms of what materials you're going to use? That's a great question. I would say um, now I'm creating a lot of art and it's all samples. 
and I should have brought it with me because I just created an alebrije. Um, but it's it's not not too much thought process right now. Obviously, because of the Katrinas that I made, um, I knew that I had to start with a, a lot of a lot of newspaper. So that was the first that was the first uh, mission. But in regards to um, some of the things that I'm creating now, which are samples for the students, it really depends on what um, what I'm going to work on. Personally, um, since I did tell you that I am working on a larger um, Katrina, um, I guess it, when you're when I'm looking at materials, is I'm looking at you know the cardboard and uh, the tape to hold it together and the different materials. So. Mm -hmm. And just staying open to different uh, types of materials or in, in your mind, do you just have like kind of maybe in the back burner or somewhere like different materials that you haven't worked with yet that you'd like to? Working here, um, I, it's opened up, it's opened up the, the possibilities of all medias from clay to um, we've actually done a little pyrography with the kids, um, like burning wood. Um, it, it, I really do get the chance to use almost all media, you know, um, it, it would be nice to paint a car <laughs> because it has, it has been a while, um, if, I guess if, now that I think about it. But I, we, I do get the opportunity to work with various media, even digital art. Even I, I create um, stickers, also um, logos. Mm -hmm. Jose, um, we're going to need to kind of close the show out. Um, is there anything about your art and your artistic journey that we haven't touched upon that you'd like to share with us? Um, I think I shared quite a bit. <laughs> I think I shared quite a bit. I. I uh, I want I want to say that um, if if it's if it, the arts is in your heart, um, and just a, a little tip, it, I think that you um, should absolutely go for it. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a wonderful media to work with. It's a wonderful media to share, and it's wonderful to uh, get to know other artists mm -hmm. and the art community from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and in terms of your. Uh, Katrina doll, the one that you're in, in process with, that's going to be, um, you said like uh, eight feet or so. Um, how is that going? And is there a projected um, time that you want to have it complete? Or is that just ongoing with all your other projects and teaching and, and your other creations? He, um, if I find the time, I want to have, I want to have her ready for Christmas. I was thinking of making a Christmas Katrina. Oh, awesome! That's a great idea. Yeah, I, I, honestly, that's. But um, if not, it's it's de definitely getting ready for Day of the Dead, and uh, I, I was thinking of Day of the Dead fundraiser for um, the which is around March. Um, that would be nice to unveil something. So within the next month, six months, more or less, hopefully I can unveil her. Mm -hmm. Jose, it's been so great to connect with you and find out about your dedication and love with, with the Mayan culture and, and your knowledge with the um, Day of the Dead and the, the beautiful altarpiece and the, the Katrina and, and you know what goes into it and also sharing uh, about your journey and, um, and how everything has evolved for you and, and you know finding your, 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 your beautiful place in, in art and in your life and you know what brings meaning to you and you know kind of brings you back to your roots and, and and all that good stuff. Thank you so much for sharing with us. I, Leslie Stu, thank you so much for approaching me. You know, I was, I'm glad that we could find a time and, and I, I appreciate your, your kindness uh, to interviewing me. Well, absolutely. Let us know, Jose, uh, how we can stay in touch with you and through social media. Um, so on Facebook, I am at r.art. So it's, uh, seven letters at r dot r and r dot stands for my initial that's actually what it what it means on instagram i am r dot i'm sorry i don't have it memorized i am um 
r underscore dot like the actual word dot underscore creative agency and um that's pretty much it those are most those are the two that i stay in touch with all right very good thank you again for being our guest today jose on our thank talk. you so much i appreciate your time oh, absolutely it's wonderful to to connect with you and um Best wishes with the Katrina doll. Stay posted with us. I want to know when 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 that's good to go and, and see some pictures. I have your email. I'll yeah. be I'll be sending it over. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank and, you. Yeah, and um, also best wishes with your teaching and all your other projects. Thanks so much. Thank Jose. you so much. All right. Take Thank care. you everyone for watching Art and Talk today. We appreciate the time you take to watch our art videos. Stay connected with us. We'll be bringing you some additional artists from the gathering exhibit at the Cultural Council. And we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed.